Hi guys, welcome back on my channel, Dorota Palicka International, new artist and educator here. Thank you so much for all the likes, shares and comments, uh, especially in those hard times, like when everyone is so bored, I'm trying to produce as many tutorials as possible. Uh, let me know in the comments down below as well how you're coping with uh, with the current situation like because i do really miss uh, doing canals and i do miss my clients um so that's probably the main reason why i'm producing so many extra tutorials such as you can see uh, like there is much more uh, videos coming out every week for you uh, just to keep you occupied uh, so let me down uh, let me know down below uh, in the comments what else uh, you are doing to uh, to keep your mind like uh, away uh, from the situation but check what we are going to do today And that's a beautiful stiletto nail. I actually still wear it on my nails, even when I do some gardening work as well. And I will show you how to do the apex form placement, uh, how to pinch it nice as well, and how to do a beautiful uh, French and a half a moon design uh, with a couple of the uh, caviar beads. So I hope you will really enjoy this tutorial. I hope you have uh, really liked this picture of the stiletto nails and that's exactly what uh, we are gonna do and here also on the channel there is a tutorial of the Russian almond I have to shorten it a little bit because I cut it uh, when I was chopping the bananas for our monkeys and then um, the pointy almond as well is on the channel and now we are going to do the stiletto so that's the forms I'm going to use and I show you total step by step so when I'm preparing my forms I just pull the a sticker place it on the back but always leave a little gap because I we need to trim the forms especially if you've got really wild nail folds like mine and then I can put this um, form on the side uh, I will just scratch the surface of my natural nail with the 180 grit well, actually let me do this way with the 180 grit and then remove the dust and dehydrate my nail with the blue scrap Then we can apply the form. So I will be using a scissors to trim it. And this is a really important part because without of the trim, I cannot pinch it the way I want. And I show you also my pinching technique. So because of those uh, nail folds, which are pretty wide, I need to make my form a little bit bigger. And what I usually do is I cut out the first um, first line out of it just to make it wider and then if you've got hyponychium you can just cut out either depending on the size of the hyponychium either a pretty decent triangle shape or just a wee rounded bit so my hyponychium is not uh, big on the pinky it's huge on my index finger and I always have to cut out quite a decent amount of the form so I'm pre-pinching the form in my fingers and making sure it is going to line nice and straight and then I can apply it underneath of the nail okay and um, for even for a stiletto shape and any kind of shape I do I want my forms to go nice and straight or a little bit up I don't want my forms to go down and um, usually if the tabs are kind of uh, having a weak gap in between them that's mean uh, I'm in the right placement of the form if they overlapping each other that's mean the form is dropping down okay so slowly i'm squishing the form into the stiletto shape and then i can start closing it okay that's the side view so it's nice and straight I even wanted it to go a little bit higher up. And we want the stiletto nail to be really nice and pointy. <laughs> That's fab. My next step is to apply an extra dehydrator on the nail plate because during the form application we usually touch the nails. Oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> Shaky hands. <laughs> and 
and then we'll be using the fiber gel in a light rose color um, so it is a light rose color and that's a cover uh, gel because quite a lot of you have asked me what color I use uh, so that's the color I'm using and my oval gel brush as well I quite like to clean my brush with the UV cleanser just before I start in case if there is any dust and bits and pieces in there so my dehydrator dry out and I can use the universal air bond so I'm just applying the universal air bond actually the pinky is probably the worst finger to do the tutorials because oh, I cannot stabilize there we are I'm picking up very small scoop of the gel just on the so one side of my brush is clean one side have the product and now I'm going to build up the skeleton of my nail. So nice and thin layer. And this will allow me to have a really nice and clean application around the cuticle area and on the sides. So first of all, because I've got little product, I can go on the entire surface of the nail. And then secondly, I've got more control what I'm doing with this such a small amount of the product. And now I'm start building up the extension. So nice and thin, right to the end. Now I can check the side view. And you can see the line. So basically what you do is just you just follow the line. And to be safe, what I always do is I rather to get outside the line a little bit. Uh, because this is a very thin layer, like it takes two touches of the nail file to be gone. I'm turning my finger now, because I need to check this side too. And because I've got such a small amount of product, I've got so much time to work with it before it starts run. And it's also going to be very flexible for the pinching. Okay, so I have apply the very thin skeleton of my nail I can give it a half a time cure so in my case I'm going to cure it usually um, I cure my gels for a one minute uh, so I will be curing about 30 seconds and then we'll be using the pinching clamps and in other old videos when I'm doing a pinching I have explained for gel always clear pinching clamps so the lights can go through it this is not acceptable for a gel. It will cause the lifting on the sides and the cracking because product is not going to be cured. And same, they are the acrylic pinching clamps, not the gels. So I have cured my skeleton of the nail and now I can apply the pinching clamp. <clears throat> Just in case I always tap and check the, uh, how the gel cure. So I can start pinching my nail and the gel likes to spring back and that's why we need the pinching clamp, clamp to keep everything in place. So what I'm doing is I'm squishing it first before I will secure my clamp. You could also use the tweezers and actually I show you guys too if I have in here on my desk. I do actually have the tweezer. They are some special pinching tools as well. But what you could do is you could squeeze it with the tweezer to get the first pinch. So you can squeeze it out. It's nicely pinched. And then you just secure the pinching clamp. So probably lots of you will ask where I place. So I place always on the widest part of the nail and make sure it is not hurting. And also for the pinching, not every nail can be pinched. If you've got very weak nails, so that's the placement of the pinching clamp. If you've got very weak nails, uh, do not pinch. Uh, it is going to, it might cause the oncolysis, which is a separation of the nail plate from the nail bed. Uh, it can also, if we over pinch the nail, it can crack all the way down to the matrix area and damage the nail permanently. So I have to give it flash cure and then I can move it, the pinching clamp even lower and give another extra curing time. I wouldn't, most of the time in a salon, I'm 
I'm not pinching the needles. Uh, I, I could pinch just very gently and it will be a single pinch. Um, my needles are really nice and strong like so I'm not worried about the pinching and I really like the look when they um, when they pinch so they first of all stronger and they also look much better as well. So I can remove the pinching clamp and you can already see how the shape has changed. Like it did change quite a lot. So let's now build up the structure. Obviously because of the length of the snail it might need two layers. I will see how I get on. Actually, it is a pinky, so I might be okay for the one. But what I'm doing, again, one side of the brush is clear, the other side of the brush has some product. I remove the product from the brush and now I'm just distributing it on the entire needle and the extension. So first of all, it is such a small amount of the product that we've got lots of control over it. Secondly, um, you've got uh, a really nice and blended cuticle area, which is going to look pretty nice and natural, like even on the snail, we can still see linula even if we have used the cover gel. So this is really important uh, when we're working with the cover gel, that it still looks nice and natural. And lots of you have asked me like how I get the cuticle area thin. So yeah, that's how I get it thin. I need to turn to the other side so I see what I'm doing. Okay, so I've got the product as a skeleton. I just wait. There we are. And now I'm going to build up my apex. So I'm picking up a pretty decent amount of the product. And I want my product to behave first on the brush, so don't rush like with it. It's the same like when we're working with the acrylics. You don't want to rush with it, so look what is happening here. I'm creating like a wee ball, and now I need to twist my hand so the gravity helps me do the job as well. So what I'm doing, and I'm always doing clients' hands like this as well. Actually, you know what, guys, I just peel this form away. Usually I keep my form um, because it's pretty dangerous to take it out now at this stage. But I I cannot show you what I want to show you. No, I don't take the form. There we are. That's the solution. <laughs> so I just cut the wings of the form. Okay, so I just need to get my brush to behave again. And now I'm going to build up the structure of my nail. So I'm leaving a wee gap from the cuticle, and I'm I'm just going on this. I'm just going on the spine of my nail, one side, other side, one side, other side, one side, other side. And the more you place the finger down, the more gravity is going to help you. Now we can just smooth out bits and pieces. Check the side view. Okay, turn it upside down and give it a cure. Okay, so that's almost oh, 30 seconds cure done. And we will be able to pinch again. So in the salon, I would never pinch twice, like uh, if I'm going to pinch, but for my nails, I like to pinch twice. So those for the magazine works, I like to pinch twice as well. And another tip, sometimes if the pinching clamp slide, what you can do is just scratch the, actually I can show you, mine doesn't slide, but I show you. So you just take a file and you just do a couple of scratches, then clean it with the nail dehydrator on, or a nail cleaner. So this way the pinching clamp is going to stay nice. This time I can take the form and it's going to be safe to do so. And you can see how nice Neil is here. And I like to pinch it upside down as a second pinch. Okay, and I can give it a final cure and then we'll go and move into the shaping so I can close on my pulse. Once again, it is a light rose color. 
and uh, for French we are going to use the paint on French gel and also we will paint the linula in white and place some caviar beads I think it will look fantastic so uh, for paint on French uh, for French design and linula I'm going to use the paint on French gel and then for a couple of the caviar beads we will use the pen uh, just to decorate the de decorate it so let me clean my brush put it on the side and then we can start shaping the nail once it's cure. I'm using the UV cleanser to remove any inhibition layer which is on the nail. Also down and you can uh, let me know in the comments down below what else you would like to see on the channel and how you coping with those um, isolation like from the people and, and with uh, all the situation. Maybe you've got some nice ideas how to survive and you can share it with other people as well which read the comments. Because um, I find it that actually running the channel now uh, it's probably the best thing I could do it like first of all it keep me occupied secondly it's probably keeping you occupied as well uh, so we all don't think about all those uh, things which are going on right now and yeah you can also hit the share button for me as well uh, so the other nail technicians can benefit from it as well and that's my nail here you can see the side view so we've got apex we've got nice stiletto nail and we've got a nice pinch in here as well. So I'm just removing the inhibition layer and let me file this nail for you now. So I'm always fi I'm always using the same filing technique for any kind of uh, nails uh, I do. So I starting with my side walls because I have told you on the beginning there might be some excess of the product which takes two moves of the file and you can already see how much nicer it looks now. So file this one, file the other side I'm not finishing filing it, I only just tidy up a little bit, okay, and use, it already looks much better. The next step around the cuticle area, so I want everything to be blended nicely. So I'm going up to the top on the cuticle and then going down the way, always filing the same way, always. Once I have done these steps, I need to smooth out the nail a little bit and that's the movements I'm doing. I'm not bothered about the apex area because that's the highest point, point on my nail. And you can already see how the shape is start changing and that's we've got lots of control over what we're doing it might end up that there will be some parts i'm kind of poking everything about uh, we, it might end up that there will be some parts which we even don't have to file. Okay, also I want to check this is everything nice and straight. So I'm going back to my first move. Then the side. Okay, so we are going nice and pointy. Obviously, this is not a salon shape. Okay, and the last touches here. I have to just twist my hand this way. So I can go a little bit faster. And now I can start buffing my nail.
So that's the time when I'm filing the apex as well to smooth everything out. And I keep going like this. So because of this movement, everything is going to be nice and even. Okay, a couple more movements just to smooth everything out. And then we can remove the dust. Now it's the time to paint the French. And uh, I will be using the angular angular brush and my paint on French. So I will just clean this nail. And let's start the painting. Actually, we need to just tidy up my cuticles too. That was unprofessional. <laughs> So I always do this part after I have finished the filing, like I, I don't do it much of it before. I only push back the cuticles and remove any uh, cuticle from the nail plate. And then this part I'm doing once I have finished all the filing, always for myself and for the clients. I'm just dipping in my brush in a paint on French gel and apply at the free edge. This is going to be a really deep smile line. So I'm finding the first corner of the smile line, which is here, then going on the side view and finding the second corner of the smile line. Checking if they are the same heights. Yes, they are. And now I'm going into the V shape. So I'm finding the middle and that's my middle. And basically what I'm going to do, so I've got three dots, one dot, second dot, third dot. And now I just need to join in everything together. Same on the other side. See, I love my folds. <laughs> they always touch the corners of the smile lines. Now I can just distribute the gel all over and perfect my smile line. So we're almost at this V and I'm pushing the product and then take it out, pushing and take it out. And now we just need to make it, it all join in the middle. Okay. And I just check my side view because it's going to be slightly different to straighten up my smile line. Doing a smile line on the camera, not the easiest task. Okay, so just straightening up the last bits and pieces. Smooth out the gel and then we can cook it.
Okay, I just need to clean the corner, so that's my smile line. And then I need to clean the corners and cook it in the lamp. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the next step, we need to paint those uh, half a moon. So I'm just taking this out and painting a half a moon. I'm using the Micro Styler number four four zero brush. I'll actually, show you that, guys, too. And please, please, please hit the share button for me, just so the channel can grow a little bit more. Okay, so that's the brush I have been using as a Micro Styler. For zero. Just to paint a half a moon. And then we can give it a cure. Now I'm actually confused, I can't remember where the caviar bits have been. Well, let me cure this one first. And I need to check where the caviar bits have been. Ah, okay, they are on the top. So don't bother about perfecting it around the cuticle area because you are going to put their caviar bits anyway. <laughs> And the caviar beads, I'm going to use the Avoted Soak of Base Gel because this way I find that they last really great. And again, my tiny, tiny brush. So I'm just cleaning it from the paint on French. And then I'm picking up the base. and put it just around the cuticle area because we want to squeeze those little bits in there And the last one. Okay, so we have just applied those uh, crystal beads. And now I can give it a cure. And our last step is to apply the top coat. So that wouldn't be like a salon style, salon style nails. Um, it is more of a magazine work or like show off work. Uh, but you could use the same uh, kind of design idea and the technique for much shorter nails and then yes they would be a salon work i'm just applying the top coat very close to the crystals and cover the entire nail Any places, if you have touched it, just clean it before you cook it. Now, I also always check for the light lines, because I want my nail to be nice and look beautiful on the pictures. And that's quite okay. And now we can give it a cure. So it is a final cure, just to make it nice and shiny, and then we will apply the cuticle oil. And that's basically the finish of this tutorial. I hope you have really enjoyed it and it took quite a long time of your uh, boredness uh, away. Uh, so let me know down in the comments below 
what you think about those type of tutorials. They are probably not going to uh, be happening like as often before, uh, but now since I've got a little bit more time, I thought I would just show you something slightly different, something more advanced. Like, so if you have not seen those previous tutorials on the Russian almond, pointy almond, go back and check them out. And today we have done those beautiful stiletto nail. I always wait a couple seconds. This is a really good tip, guys, for you as well. After you have cured the client's nails, never go straight away to clean them or let them wash their hands or apply the cuticle oil because that can make your uh, top coat to be a little bit dull. So always wait a couple seconds and then you can clean it and apply the cuticle oil and your nail will be nice and shiny. So uh, that's a very useful tip for the ones which have watched me right to this point. And actually let me know how many of you have watched full tutorial because that's I'm pretty curious as well because most of the people watch it just only a couple minutes um, like uh, but yeah I'm curious who watched it actually right down to this point so glittery hacks and stay safe guys thanks for watching bye now